We could call him Riley, my husband Brett said, referring to the Chihuahua mix playing on the Humane Society floor with our son Ryan. Snuggled close, Ryan and Riley touched noses. Ryan looked up at me. Can we bring him home, Mom? The papers we signed that night were labeled adoption papers. But bringing home a new animal, as much as our pets are members of our families, is not adoption. Adoption is opening your heart to a baby, then waiting six months to meet him. Adoption is worrying about who rocks him at night, then hoping someone just comes when he cries. Adoption is squeezing your eyes and ears shut when people tell you what happens in Eastern European orphanages. It's filling out forms so personal, you wonder how having a biological child, no forms required, is even legal. <laughs> it's inviting a social worker into your home to review all those questions and ask even more. 17 years ago, Brett and I flew to Moscow, then took a train 14 hours east to meet our 18-month-old adoptive son. The medical report had allayed our concerns, but not until our visit to Filatov Hospital in Moscow did we learn how, lo how wrong that report would be. See his big forehead? Water on the brain, the doctor said in a thick Russian accent. I felt dizzy. The exam room was sweltering in the 95 degree heat. Ryan's fine, short bangs were plastered to that big forehead. Sweat rolled down my back, my short sleeve top glued to my skin. At this visit required for Ryan's visa, the doctor had quickly reviewed our boy's medical records, then turned his attention to the eerily quiet toddler on the exam table. Boy wasn't breathing when he was born. Hospital gave oxygen, he added. I felt like I was 50 yards away. How long? I mumbled from that faraway place, looking at the limp toddler on the table. Not so long. The, boys, the doctor moved our son's legs. Boy's legs are weak. The doctor scooped Ryan up off the table, then set him on the floor where he stood looking at the wall. He spoke in Russian to Ryan, who glanced at him for a split second, then quickly away before taking slow steps in his odd Frankenstein-like gait. I looked over at Brett. His face was ashen, eyebrows furrowed. Pyramid insufficiency, the doctor pointed to Ryan's legs. This is problem. What was he saying? Will he get better? Maybe he needs more practice walking, I said in a small voice. Why wasn't Brett saying anything? A knot of anger formed in my chest. I looked at Ryan, so eerily still. What were we doing here? What about the medical report that said that Ryan could speak in full sentences? Just then, Brett, a strong six foot five man whose height regularly brought stairs, crumpled onto the bench in a fainting heap. The doctor slipped quickly out of the room while I used a diaper to fan Brett. <laughs> Ryan stood there, eyes wide, meeting mine occasionally with furtive sideways glances. I reached out to our boy, but he looked away, unmoving. Brett sat up slowly, looking pale. The doctor returned with a can of soda pop and handed it to Brett. Drink this. I need to see next patient. But, but we have more questions, I insisted. How can we help our son, his leg strength? Get ultrasound of brain. Can we get that here? Ultrasound office closed, he answered, handing, handing us Ryan's records. When does it open? We asked in unison. September. <laughs> we stared open-mouthed. This was July. On vacation, the doctor added. Get ultrasound in states. He is good boy. Only 20, maybe 30% chance of real problem. Doctor will tell you in America. Was Ryan OK? Or wasn't he? He'd gone to sleep in my arms. We knew that institutionalization caused developmental delays, but we hadn't prepared ourselves for other issues. Now, without understanding the extent of his needs, how could we help him? Back in our hotel room, Brett called our pediatrician in Portland. Ryan stood stiffly near the edge of the bed, eyes averted. Even the toy I offered didn't interest him. Does he what? Walk on tiptoe, Brett was saying. No, he hardly walks at all, stands and stares. I looked at our son, remembering all the warnings from well-meaning friends and family. 
News of children adopted from Eastern European orphanages had generated a flurry of concerned phone calls and emails before our trip. What's that? Brett put his hand over the receiver. He says to offer him something. Get him to walk to you, Sue. I reached into my bag, fished out some crackers, and held them out to Ryan. He goose-stepped my way, reaching tentatively for the crackers, pushing three of them into his mouth at once. Yes, he walked stiffly, but not too wobbly, Brett was saying. Then he was silent, listening. How I wished for a speakerphone. More listening. Then Brett's eyes welled up as he put down the receiver. What? What is it? I reached up to hug him. He says, he choked up for a minute. He says, I think he's your son and you need to bring him home. As I'd watched our son playing on the floor with the dog that night at the Humane Society, I'd thought about that day 17 years ago in Moscow. Ryan, our born athlete, our prankster, our tall, lanky, typical teen, our son. I want a dog, Mom, he'd said, but will he get along with the cats? Will he be okay? Can we bring him home? Of course, honey, I'd said, tears in my eyes. Trust me, he'll be okay. Thank you.